Now, we, we say we love all people. Uh, we love people that hurt us and all that kind of stuff. But this, this love of the people that we know and this love for people uh, that are imperfect or maybe have uh, caused us some pain, this love can only come from the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. You know? From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi, Steve Arterburn here, and thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. And I've been going deeper into numbers. Covered the alphabet. Today we're on number four. Well, this wasn't a hard choice on what to talk about. I want to talk to you about the four absolutes. These four absolutes, well, they came out of the teachings from the Oxford groups. And that, those groups, that's where uh, Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob got their start. And some of the principles, many of the principles from AA uh, began there. Very consistent. But... In the Oxford groups, they had these four absolutes, and there was a, a belief that if you took all of the teachings of Christ, you could boil them down, and they would fall into these four truths. They were absolutely true. And uh, so here they are. The first would be absolute honesty. And, and second, absolute purity, uh, absolute unselfishness, and absolute love. So let's start by uh, talking about absolute honesty. Honesty is, is really uh, difficult. Uh, it's one thing to always tell the truth, but not all the truth. Uh, and it's another thing to tell all the truth and tell everything and it all be known. When they ask a, a politician, uh, they said, so um, we'd like for you to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. He gave three different answers. Now, that's a horrible uh, joke, I know. But we can hedge so easily on truth and being honest. It isn't easy to be honest. But when we are honest, we, we can maintain um, an intimacy that simply will never ever be there if we don't have that honesty. Look at this, this uh, scripture, John 8, 44. It's really clear. It says that Satan is the father of lies. And one of the things that dishonesty does is it destroys intimacy. Intimacy with God and intimacy with other people. If you want to be intimate, there has to be a mutuality with other people. And the minute that you are dishonest, you now have some power, or you think you do, or a sense of control of some information that the other doesn't have. And it completely wipes out what you would call mutuality. So I think it's important for people to maybe write down on a piece of paper honestly how you view yourself, how you score on being the authentic and real and revealing person in an honest way. Second thing is purity. Now, purity is like pregnancy. You can't be a little bit pregnant. You either are or you aren't. And you can't be a little bit pure. You either are or you aren't. Jesus said, it's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You're defiled by what comes from your heart. And another way to look at this is, you know, purity comes from everything within the heart, but also our mind, our thought life. We need to be uh, regular weeding, regularly weeding out the impure thoughts and finding ways to keep ourselves pure in heart and mind and soul and spirit. But purity just, it just doesn't uh, have any place for pornography, for lust, for greed, any of the sins of the heart, they're not there. You know people 
that have a pure spirit. You know people that have a godly uh, spirit. And you know people that when you think of them, they, their motives are pure. Their actions are pure. They're not perfect. But they have this purity that is so valued. And especially when it comes to our sexual life, the private sexual life in our mind and heart, purity is so valuable for us to maintain. The third of the absolutes is unselfishness. And of course, in this uh, world, we're all about self and how much money we can make and how much we can get for ourselves. And there is so much entitlement that's being taught to our kids and being absorbed by our kids that it's no wonder that they expect everything to be for them and about them. Just this morning, I was telling Amelia, who came down the stairs just looking great, and I said, Amelia, you must accept that not everybody is going to be as fascinated with you as we are. We just like to, to see you come down the stairs. And we joke about it, but we're joking about it because we like to talk about it. That this is not the real world where parents just, you know, love everything uh, that you do. And, uh, you know, you're, we, we just even like to hear you breathe. And you're probably going to marry somebody at some point. Even your breathing's going to irritate them at some point or another. So we're trying to be realistic. But we want to get out of ourselves and into other people. And that's, that's the life that is the rewarding life when we just cannot help but reach out and help other folks and be all about their best interest. And then the fourth absolute is absolute uh, love. And love is, well, you can't do it perfectly, you know, because only God can love perfectly. But love really is an action and it comes from a heart of love for others. And I think if we broke down what, what is love made of, well, first of all, it's made of acceptance. You know, you're accepting someone as they are if you love them. And, and love is about encouragement. So you're accepting them and you're encouraging them to become the best of everything that they are. And there's a, there's a connection, some kind of uh, you could call it magical um, magnetism, maybe, that brings you to that person with love. Now, we, we say we love all people. Uh, we love people that hurt us and all that kind of stuff. But this, this love of the people that we know and this love for people uh, that are imperfect or maybe have uh, caused us some pain, this love can only come from the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. If you look at 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, the love chapter, just let me read it again. You've heard it so many times, but it says, love is patient and kind, not jealous. It's not boastful or proud or rude. It doesn't demand its own way. Now, you know, a narcissist is a person that isn't patient or kind. A narcissist is jealous and boastful and very proud and very rude. Why? Because they're so hurt inside. This narcissism is protecting them. They don't love themselves. It looks like it, but it's all a front. It's a survival strategy that isn't very good. It says, love doesn't demand its own way. It's not irritable. It doesn't keep a record of wrongdoings. It doesn't rejoice about injustice but rejoices when truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. That's what love is. I think the, the greatest thing about love is that it is enduring. One of the things that I have tried to convince my kids is there's no reason to rebel and see uh, how far our love will stretch. Because I'm just going to tell you, you can never, ever, ever leave our love. We're going to love you no matter what. We'll love you in prison. We'll love you wherever you are. We're going to love you. And uh, I really believe that that is true. We're going to endure with them no matter what. And out of our love, we're trying to help them to leverage today toward tomorrow. Learn stuff today so you get the tomorrow you want. 
save money today, you don't spend it all, you get a future with some financial stability. Don't express every emotion, don't do everything that feels good, and you end up with an emotional stability in the future. Today is an investment, or not, in the future. And that's what love is all about. We, we pour love into another person so that their future can be the very best that it can be. Because if you don't feel loved, you're not going to have much of an enjoyment in whatever future you have. Well, those are my four absolutes for the number four. Appreciate you joining me for Going Deeper. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.